In response to a union authorization card drive by the CWA, the Communications Workers of America, which could lead to a company-wide vote on forming a union. Activision Blizzard, in a company-wide email, tried to discourage workers from unionizing because of course they did. Employees at Activision are currently on strike over the layoffs at Raven Software, where 20 QA testers, which is 30% of the QA team, were laid off after the entire team were promised raises for months and were working overtime for five weeks. What started as a walkout in Wisconsin has become a full-blown strike and has spread to Texas and Minnesota and now includes people outside the QA departments who joined in solidarity. There is currently a GoFundMe set up for the people at Raven Software who are currently on strike until their demands are met. I'll link that in the descriptions. We know of the company-wide email from Jessica Gonzalez, who used to work at Activision but resigned as the company kept refusing to address the issues plaguing the disgusting corporation. Despite resigning, she still fights at the forefront of making things better for her old colleagues in the gaming industry. Now, let's tear into that email. Everyone, fuck you, Brian, fuck you. At Activision, we are working hard to create a more inclusive, supportive, and rewarding environment, and thanks to your input, we are making progress. Yes, these changes come after it's become public knowledge that they've spent years maintaining and perpetuating an abusive, retaliatory, toxic, discriminatory, and unrewarding environment, and actively ignoring people's input. We keep hearing on and on about how they want a more inclusive, supportive environment, but so far it's been nothing but empty words. We want action, not empty words. In the past few months, we've announced that we're converting 500 temporary workers to full-time employees at Activision Publishing Studios, and we have increased wages for a large portion of temporary workers and added paid time off benefits. Yes, it's good that you're finally giving workers what they should have had in day one when they signed up to work for you, and not after shit it's the fan. Also, how does this in any way excuse the fact that they laid off 20 QA testers who were in good standing, meaning they didn't underperform and didn't commit any offenses that warranted their firing? In fact, there wasn't a justifiable reason given on why they were laid off. Not only that, the QA team in Raven Software were strung along under false pretenses of pay raises and promotions for months as they worked overtime. They had to relocate to Wisconsin without any assistance from Activision, so they are guaranteed to be in serious financial troubles right now. Those that weren't let go now have their morales crushed under increased workloads. Activision has actively made everyone miserable with a single move. And these people are only going to be more miserable as time goes on. Such a wonderful work environment. Someone go prep the guillotines. We introduced a zero-tolerance harassment policy and waived required arbitration of sexual harassment and discrimination claims. What was the percentage in the last one considering Activision not only tolerated abusive behavior at the company, they perpetuated it. In the case of Dan Bunting, in 2019, HR investigated him and they recommended he be fired. Bobby Kardick intervened and protected him. Dan Bunting was instead recommended counseling and allowed to keep his job because of course that's what happened. Then there's the part about waiving the required arbitration of sexual harassment and discrimination claims. The required arbitration shouldn't have existed in the first place. After this new zero tolerance policy was touted by Activision stating that they intend to fix things, the Wall Street Journal article came out revealing even more damning information, such as Bobby Kotick's own history. Anyone else remember the letter written by Fran Townsend? She was a recently hired executive at Activision Blizzard, and before that she used to work for the George W. Bush administration as a torture apologist. Her letter was so divisive and controversial that the employees at Activision staged a walkout, and Bobby Kotick came out publicly condemning the letter, calling it tone deaf. Well, it turns out Fran Townsend didn't write that letter. It was in fact written and sent by, surprise, surprise, Bobby fucking Kotick, who used Fran Townsend as a fall guy while he portrayed himself as ignorant of everything that went on in the company. After the damning Wall Street Journal report, employees at Activision demanded Kotick resign. The board of directors at Activision wrote a statement 
saying that they fully stand behind and support Bobby Kardik. Activision also said that they can't punish Bobby Kardik under their new zero tolerance policy because they have zero evidence as all of the allegations happened 10 years ago. Gee, I wonder why this reminds me of the recent allegations that Activision Blizzard was destroying evidence. We essentially have proof that their zero tolerance policy is complete and utter bullshit. We have made significant commitments to increase gender diversity and are dedicating 250 million to accelerate opportunities for diverse talent across the industry. We have more to do and we believe the direct dialogue between management and employees is essential for the success of Activision Blizzard. Yes. And to show their commitment to gender diversity, they appointed Jennifer O'Neill, replacing J. Allen Brecht as co-lead of Activision Blizzard. And it turns out, she was paid less than what her male counterpart was being paid. And management actively fought against giving her equal pay. According to her, it was clear that the company would never prioritize our people the right way. O'Neill wrote, I have been tokenized, marginalized, and discriminated against. Now to the main part of this disgusting letter. As you may have seen yesterday, there was a communication supported by the Communications Workers of America that asked employees to sign and submit union authorization cards. I want to be clear about this. The leadership of Activision Blizzard supports your right under the National Labor Relations Act to make your own decision about whether or not you want to join a union. This is just ridiculous. They're basically saying that they are only supporting their workers' right to form a union because they are legally mandated to do so under existing law. Activision is actually well known for its anti-labor practices, which shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Jessica Gonzalez tweeted about one of their anti-labor practices, heard that QA at Minnesota workers were told to work until lunch and then walk out every day. Don't do this. Intermittent striking is not protected. They are banking on you not knowing your rights. Do not clock in. Send in your email. I think the triple O stands for out of office. Intermittent striking is not protected and can be treated as you voluntarily resigning. The only reason Activision Blizzard is encouraging intermittent striking is because it's a convenient way to get rid of problematic employees wanting better treatment. As you make this decision for your future, we ask only that you take time to consider the consequences of your signature on the binding legal document presented to you by the CWA. Ah, there it is. The thinly veiled threats that are found in every union busting statement taken straight out of a $5 script sold by every union-busting company. Instead of addressing the concerns put forward by their workers, Activision has instead opted to spend its vast resources to engage in union-busting. I recommend the John Oliver video on union-busting, linked in the cards above or in the description. There's an entire industry built around union-busting and Activision Blizzard is clearly on the side of union-busting. When the entire lawsuit by California over Activision's toxic work environment and sexual harassment started, Activision hired Wilmer Hale, a law firm notorious for union busting. Gee, I wonder why that piece of information is suddenly relevant. Once you sign that document, you will have signed over to the CWA the exclusive right to represent you for the purposes of collective bargaining concerning all terms and conditions of employment, that means your ability to negotiate all your own working conditions will be turned over to the CWA, just as the document says. Yes. And so far, I'm not seeing a problem here. Activision truly cares about their employees losing the ability to individually negotiate with their exploitative discriminatory employer. I'm sure the people working at Activision absolutely love their corporate work contracts that they weren't allowed to negotiate, placing them at the mercy of a greedy despicable corporation that underpays them and fires them at the drop of a hat. The only negotiations Activision wants is to tell their workers to shut up and do what they're told or be fired, with workers being rendered powerless to go against them. Under the oppressive system that is capitalism, 
corporations are anti-democratic and run like dictatorships, where a small group of people at the top have all the power and make all the decisions for the majority of people at the bottom. This tiny minority at the top wields an enormous amount of power. They decide when you come to work, how long you can work, where you can work, how much you are paid, what tools and facilities you use, what you produce and how much you can produce. And the workers have no say in any of this unless they collectively bargain. This power imbalance isn't some accident or bug in the system. It is an intentional and inherent feature of the capitalist system. The very system that allows sociopaths like Bobby Kotick to get to the top and enrich himself. Achieving our workplace cultural aspirations will best occur through active transparent dialogue between leaders and employees that we can act upon quickly. That is the better path than simply signing an electronic form offered to you by the CWA or awaiting the outcome of a legally mandated and regulated bargaining process sometime in the future. If Activision wants an active, transparent dialogue between leadership and employees, then the workers who are currently striking have been waiting for more than six days for that active and transparent dialogue. Seriously, put your money where your mouth is, Activision, or shut the hell up. Activision is against the legally mandated and regulated bargaining process because in that case, they legally have to negotiate as opposed to the current setup where they can easily dismiss everything the workers say or demand out of hand without consequence. Activision doesn't want any real dialogue. They just want employees to shut up and continue to work in horrible working conditions just so the executives can continue to line their pockets off the backs of these employees. So far the workers have gotten screwed over every time they try to have a transparent dialogue with leadership who over the years have refused to address worker concerns. When the workers reported any problems, they often got retaliated against such as being demoted, fired, being denied raises and promotions, or being given terrible workloads to make them miserable, while the abusers were climbing the corporate ladder with the blessing of the executives who oversaw all of this. If we fail to do the things we've committed to doing, then of course you will still always have the right to engage with and vote for the CWA. But we are confident that we will make the progress we previously pledged to make and create a workplace with you that we can all be proud of. If you fail, if you fail, you've already failed many times over many years, which is why the present situation exists. Activision is being sued by the state of California and workers are currently striking demanding better treatment and along with the resignation of the human equivalent of Jabba the Hutt that is Bobby Kotick because you failed so many times. And speaking of something to be proud of, the executives at Activision have been proud every single year about the record profits they've made at the expense of the workers they've been abusing. Activision has no intention of actually making the workplace safer or more inclusive. All these promises for change are just for show. Otherwise, why wouldn't the executives just fire Bobby Kotick? They have no intention of fixing anything and just want to placate the masses with empty words. If you want to take away anything from this video, it's that the company and executives are not your friends. They are not your family. They are not your ally. No matter how many pizza parties they promise, no matter what pretty platitudes they string together, their words are just hypocrisy. The company and the executives are your exploiters. During all these years of record profits, many low-level staff were underpaid and many were laid off while the executives kept bragging about the profits they made while giving themselves massive multi-million dollar bonuses. They never once actively tried to address the concerns of workers because they don't care. To them you are just a disposable cog in a machine that exists solely to make them money at your own expense. And they want to maintain that status quo, that power structure that enriches them at your expense. A union gives workers the power to demand better pay, better benefits, better working hours, a decent, safe, inclusive and dignified work environment. These are all things the executives hate and actively fight against because it cuts into the bottom line that they use to give themselves so many multi-million dollar bonuses. That's it for this video and thank you for watching.